What if I told you the brightest mathematician in ancient history wasn't just a genius, but was out there changing the course of science and warfare, and his freaky habits turned into the stuff of legend? Below goes the story of Archimedes, a mathematician so ahead of his time that even his death feels like it was ripped from a tragic play. From running down the street, naked, yelling, Eureka! Zrania devising war machines which terrified the Roman soldier, the life of Archimedes is just about as weird as brilliant. Archimedes of Syracuse was born about 287 BCE, the son of an astronomer from the Greek city of Syracuse. Even as a young child, he showed every indication of achieving greatness. Whereas the other children played with their playthings, Archimedes sought out the wonders of nature. He was more than curious. He was consumed. His work would touch base with mathematics, physics, engineering, and even military defense. But brilliance usually came with strange intensity, often bordering on eccentricity. One of the most legendary moments in history, during the Roman siege of Syracuse in 213 BCE, the city under siege, he was summoned for his intellect to serve protection. What he did was absolutely terrifying. Just think of standing on a Roman warship, approaching the walls, when suddenly it would find itself being welcomed by these huge mechanical arms which reached out, grasped your ship, and flipped it over into the sea. It was these more familiar claws that turned the tide of battle so effectively. But that was not all. The great Archimedes was reputed to have devised a method of setting the enemy ships on fire with nothing but mirrors focusing sunlight. There was arguably no more horrifying sight in view for the Roman soldiers than seeing their ships burst in flames, apparently from an act of the gods. For two years these defenses held the Romans at bay. To the soldiers, it would have seemed that this was a city protected by some crazy scientist who utilized powers beyond their wildest comprehension. Archimedes wasn't just a genius of mathematics. He was also a man consumed by work, often to the exclusion of everything else. Take his famous Eureka story. King Hero II had ordered a golden crown and wanted to know whether the smith had secretly mixed cheaper metals into it. The king turned to Archimedes to solve the problem. It must be an attractive challenge for Archimedes too, as it took some time that he could only think about just a method which in some form would not result in destroying the crown in any sort. Getting into the bath once day, he saw the elevation in water level. Then it had been struck. The quantity of displaced water is exactly equal to his personal body volume, and he found, using that rationale, another way of detecting the denseness of the crown by not melting it. Overcome with excitement, he leapt out of the bath and ran naked through the streets of Syracuse, shouting, Eureka! Eureka! In Greek, I have found it! But it wasn't one of the oddest moments in history, but a turning point. Archimedes had uncovered the principle of buoyancy, the foundation for modern fluid mechanics. But to Archimedes, it was much more than just that. A discovery, it was an obsession. But the particularities of Archimedes did not stop there. Very often, he would not eat or bathe, spending hours or even days lost in his thoughts. In his time, he was considered brilliant, yet strange a man who seemed to live in a world completely his own. Yet it was not in his private habits, only that the eccentricity of Archimedes was betrayed. Still more strangely did it work its way into his inventions. The celebrated defense during the siege of Syracuse, other than the claw and burning mirrors, was to design catapults so complex, capable of heaving huge stones with deadly effect. His machines were sophisticated enough to give the vastly outnumbered Syracusans a fighting chance against the Romans. But Archimedes was more than a wartime engineer. The breadth of his contribution to science and mathematics is staggering. He invented the Archimedean screw, a device used today in lifting water for irrigation systems, and he discovered principles of leverage and said famously, Give me a place to stand, and I will move the earth. His mathematical results were no less revolutionary, too. 
the exact calculation of areas and volumes unrivaled for centuries to come. The approximation of the value of pi, devising methods for calculating the area under curves, and dealing with concepts which laid the foundation for calculus nearly 2,000 years before it was to be developed. On the other hand, Archimedes was a very humble person. He never liked fame and attention. All he wanted is to find truth and knowledge. Brilliant as he was, Archimedes could not keep out of the war muddle. In 212 BC finally, the Romans broke into Syracuse. The general, Marcellus, an admirer of Archimedes, gave strict orders to spare him. But Archimedes, oblivious of the invasion, sat in the sand drawing diagrams and working on a problem. As one story goes, when a Roman soldier approached him, Archimedes muttered, Do not disturb my circles. The unfortunate soldier did neither never recognized him or cared. He killed the ancient thinker on sight. This horrid death even appalled the Romans. General Marcellus felt this was another case where Rome had devastated not merely a human life, but also a treasure house of knowledge of humanity. The story of Archimedes reminds one of real potential, which human curiosity and respectively the following of one's passion could mean, even in those cases when this passion appeared strange or odd for the rest of society. Riches and power were not the concerns for Archimedes. The very process of discovery and finding such truths about the universe, which no one else could, would appeal to him. This pure intellectual passion, thus he lived on the ground through his whole life, but he took it to such an extreme degree with maximum. But his is a cautionary tale too. Archimedes was so consumed by work that he often disconnected with the world around him. His death reminds us of balance, to pursue our dreams with passion, but never at the cost of our connection to the present moment. Take away maelstrom thyself, deep within the things you love. But remember always to come up for air. Like Archimedes, our passion may one day change the world, but it is our associations along the way which make life worth living. What do you think? Can you live like Archimedes, with this one-pointed devotion? You think there is some sense to balance passion with realism? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this story about Archimedes, hit that like button and share this video with someone who loves tales of genius and history. Don't forget to subscribe for more incredible stories about the brilliant, the bizarre, and the unforgettable figures who shaped our world. Thanks for watching. And remember, sometimes the weirdest minds leave the biggest marks on history.